Welcome. This is the first in a series of video tutorials on LaTeX. LaTeX is a document markup language that can be used to create technical documents. We'll be using LaTeX to create documents containing mathematical notation. This will be particularly useful for typing your math homework, for posting mathematical content online, and for writing reports containing mathematical notation. Before we begin, we need to install two free software packages. One is the LaTeX distribution, which turns our code into a readable document, and the other is a LaTeX text editor, which we use to write our code. For Windows PC users, I recommend using the LaTeX distribution called MicTech, and for Mac OS users, I recommend using the LaTeX distribution called MacTech. Both of these come bundled with a text editor called TechWorks, which you can use to create your LaTeX documents. However, I recommend installing a second software package called TechMaker and using that instead of TechWorks. TechMaker has several user-friendly features that make it easier for beginners. In order to create our first document, we'll need to open our text editor. So I have TechMaker opened, and when you open this for the first time, I recommend going into Options, Configure TechMaker, and under Commands, I recommend checking this Embed box. That's going to allow us to not only see the code that we're writing, but also view the output as well. Under Quick Build, uh, make sure that you've selected PDF LaTeX plus View PDF. That's the form of our final document, and that should be checked by default. And then under Editor, um, again, these should be checked by default. We want word wrapping turned on, completion turned on. We want to show line numbers. And then if you want to, you can check this box to back up your work every 10 minutes. To begin, we need to create a new file, and we want to save the file. We're not going to be able to compile our code until we've saved the file, so go ahead and save as. I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop. And we'll call this Tutorial 1. We always begin our code with the command document class. And all of the commands in LaTeX start with a backslash. So we type backslash and then document class. And as I begin typing, notice that the program is recommending this command for me. So if I hit, I can continue typing, or if I hit enter right now, it's going to fill in that highlighted command document class. Now after the words document class, we have a pair of square brackets with something in the middle, and we have a pair of curly brackets, again, with something in the middle. So these are arguments that we need to fill in. The square brackets, what we type in there is the font size, and our options are 10 point, 11 point, or 12 point. I prefer 11 point, but if you want yours a little smaller, you can go with 10, or a little larger, you can go with 12. And then inside the curly brackets, we're going to tell what kind of document we're creating. And the type of document is an article. And you will almost always use article for your document type. The next thing we have to do is begin our document. So we type backslash begin and again it's making some suggestions for me and I can use the scroll bar to see all of the possible commands that start with begin the one I want is begin document so we can type it out or we can select it from the list here um, now notice what happened when I typed begin document it automatically inserted end document this is a command that appears in a pair. It has an opening and a closing tag. So we always have to have slash end document when we use slash begin document. If we don't have the end document when we try and compile the code or build the file, we're going to get errors. So in between these two commands, begin document and end document, is where we're actually going to type what we want to see on our page. So this is called the body of the document. 
what we typed in the beginning initially, document class, that part of our code is called the preamble. So let's just try typing something. This is my first LaTeX document. It's a good idea to compile your code frequently and view the output to, just to make sure that it looks the way you think it's going to look. Um, but more importantly, so that you can catch any syntax errors that you may make along the way. If you wait until you're completely finished typing all of your code, and then when you compile it, you end up with 25 errors, it's much more difficult to go back and figure out where those errors occurred. So let's go ahead and compile our code or build our document. And we can click this arrow as a shortcut, and that will compile our code for us, and it should show us um, what a PDF would look like then over here in this area on the right. So over here on the right we can see uh, what our document is going to look like. Now it's very uh, hard to see right now because it's so tiny but we can zoom in um, to get a better look. Another thing I can do uh, to give myself a, a larger viewing space over here is to close some of these other areas. If I hit the structure tab, um, that'll hide that area on the left and if I click the message log tab, that'll hide this area on the bottom. Okay. So all we have so far is a line of text and when we just type our code, this is text mode. If we want to type mathematical notation, um, then we want to come out of text mode and go into math mode. So let's look at another example. Um, this time I'm going to say, suppose we are given a rectangle with side lengths, and I'm going to use side lengths of x plus 1 and x plus 3. So the x plus 1, I want it to display as math. And in order to switch from text mode into math mode, we begin, tech, we begin the math mode with a dollar sign. And then we have to remember to end our math mode with a dollar sign as well. So I want the quantity x plus 1. And then I'm going to type a dollar sign, oh, parentheses, dollar sign to come back out of math mode and go back into text mode. So suppose we're given a rectangle with side lengths x plus 1 and x plus 3. So now I'm going to go back into math mode and I find it easier to go ahead and type both the opening and the closing dollar sign so I don't forget and then just uh, move my cursor back and type the math in between that. So I want x plus 3. Okay, so let's build this and see what it looks like. Okay, that's pretty much what I expected, except for the fact that in my source code, my first sentence and my second sentence are on two separate lines. And in the output, they're all running together in one paragraph. So in your code, when you hit return, that doesn't automatically cause a line break like you might expect it to. So there are two ways to get a line break if you want one. You can put in an extra return in your source code. So that means a blank line in between um, the last bit of code and the next bit of code. And now you'll see if I build this again that it did put them on new lines. The other thing we could have done, so let me delete this extra line is I could have typed two backslashes and two backslashes um, is the code for a soft return. So now if I build this um, you'll see it it definitely started the second sentence on a new line but they're not lined up so what's happening there? Well the first line is the start is starting a new paragraph and it's automatically indented in LaTeX. So in a later tutorial when we talk more about formatting we'll see how to um, remove indents if you don't want your paragraphs to automatically be indented. 
Uh, so, you know, we can decide if we want to do the soft return or the hard return. For now, I'm just going to do the hard return. So it's going to start a new paragraph for that se second sentence, and it's going to indent it. So when I build the file, it actually looks like it's lined up. Now I'm going to add another sentence here. Then the equation a equals x squared plus 4x plus 3 represents the area of the rectangle. Now that sentence was all in text mode. So if I build it, I get an error and it's telling me that I'm missing a dollar sign so I have entered um, math without putting it in math mode. So let me go ahead and fix that by putting dollar signs around the math portion. And you can see um, that once I inserted that dollar sign, everything that comes after is green, showing me that it's math mode. But when I put the closing dollar sign, only what's in between the dollar signs is green. So again, that makes it visually very easy to see what's in math mode and what's in text mode. Text mode is black. The math mode is green. The command names are blue. The arguments on the commands um, are black. Okay, so let's try building that again. Hopefully we don't get an error this time. Okay, um, that looks good. When I use dollar signs around my math notation, yes, I'm in math mode, but more specifically, I'm in inline math mode. And that means the math is going to display on the same line as the text. If I want to set it apart and have the math portion displayed on its own line, then instead of being in inline math mode, I want to be in display math mode. And we accomplish that by using double dollar signs. So I'm going to type this paragraph again. I'm just going to quickly copy and paste. But this time my area equation I'm going to put in display math mode. So we want double dollar signs to begin our math mode and double dollar signs to end that math mode. And now when we build our file Suppose we're given a rectangle with side lengths x plus 1 and x plus 3, then the equation, and now that we're in displayed math mode, it's going to put that um, math portion on its own line centered, so to set it apart. It's not in line with the text. It's on its own line. Um, and then we came out of that and went back into text mode, so then we just continued with our paragraph. It represents the area of the rectangle. So that completes our first tutorial. We've seen how to create a basic LaTeX document. Now find and open the folder where you saved your LaTeX document. If you remember, we called it Tutorial 1. And notice that there are actually five files in this, in this folder all associated with that LaTeX document that we created. The two that you're going to be interested in are the PDF and that's going to be the output. So if you open this PDF file, you'll be able to view your output document. The other is the tech file. So um, you're not seeing the extension here. It's hidden from view. But it's saved as a .tex file. And uh, if you double click on this, it will open that tech file in your tech editor. So it, it opened it right up into TechMaker for me. So if we wanted to come back and edit it at a later date, that's how we would open our file.